No-gas service isolator is a technique for cutting off live, low-pressure steel services in gas-free conditions. The technique has been designed for use when isolating 3 quarter inch to 2 inch services prior to live insertion or as a cut-off method. The reason this technique has been introduced is to improve operator safety. As you will be aware, gas services are often cut off under live gas conditions where there is no isolation valve to disconnect the service. This technique avoids the risk of working with live gas by installing a temporary stopper whilst the service is cut off. As an operative, it puts you in control. There's no need to rush the cutoff as it becomes a control operation, typically taking around 8 minutes. The technique is designed for use on low-pressure steel services operating at pressures up to 75 millibar. The isolator technique is suitable for use when services are being abandoned or relayed and offers complete gas-free operation when used in conjunction with live service insertion. Ensure the excavation is of suitable size to carry out the isolation and subsequent operations such as live service insertion. The dimensions given here are those recommended for live surface insertion. Check that the condition of the pipe is suitable to support the surface isolator equipment and clean the pipe to allow the isolator clamp to be fitted and give a good seal. This is the equipment designed for use in the technique. Shown here is a kit for isolating surfaces between 3 quarter inch and 1 and a quarter inch. Two larger sizes of clamp are available for 1.5 inch and 2 inch with associated equipment. First select the correct size clamp. The service pipe being used in this film is 1 inch BSP, so the 1 inch clamp is being selected. Inspect the working parts for signs of damage. Check that the valves open and close and that the nuts and bolts are clean and the thread runs smoothly. Bolts can easily be replaced if they are damaged. Open the clamp and check that the rubber is not damaged. Then fit the clamp onto the service pipe, ensuring that you have sufficient working space for cutting off the service or for any further work. The angle valve should face the direction of the flow of gas. Tighten down the bolts using a hand ratchet or spanner, remembering to tighten the nuts evenly. Don't over tighten, but ensure that the clamp is firmly attached. Next, take up the drill. The drill has a quick release mechanism. Make sure that the feed screw and quick release thread are clean and undamaged, removing any tape left on from a previous job. Using an Allen key, check that the pilot drill is in place and tight. Select the correct size hole saw and attach this. Here we're using the 24mm size for the 1 inch pipe. Spin the drill shaft and check alignment. Draw the shaft back up into the drill. Wrap PTFE tape around the drill body thread to achieve a gas tight seal. Move the angled valve out of the way and attach the drill onto the upright valve and tighten. Reclose the valve. Now assemble the stopper. Take up the star gland body, unscrew the knurled retaining nut and pull out the gland cartridge. Fully charge the star gland cartridge with approved silicon grease. This will ensure a gas tight seal up to 100 millibar. Reassemble the star gland. Take up the insertion rod and visually check the spring for damage. Replace the spring if damaged. Make sure that the thread where the stopper is to be attached is clean. Also make sure that the lock nut is tight. Push the insertion rod into the gland body spring end first. Attach the T-handle onto the threaded end of the rod. Select the correct size rubber stopper. The stoppers are colour-coded according to size. Here we are using the red-coded stopper. 
Attach the stopper to the spring. Applying a light spray of an approved lubricant will aid insertion and extend the life of the stopper without affecting the equipment. Withdraw the stopper into the gland body. Attach the stopper assembly onto the angled valve and tighten. As this is an O-ring seal, there is no need to use tape. Now you need to carry out an integrity test on the clamp and drill. Attach the water gauge tube to the gland body and open the valve. Attach the pump to the vertical valve and crack open the valve. Don't open it fully as the drill will drop down. Apply pressure and carry out a 100 millibar integrity test. If the test is not successful, by a process of elimination you can identify the leakage source by independently opening and closing the valves. Remove the pump and release the pressure. Open the vertical valve and slide the drill shaft down until the pilot drill comes into contact with the service. As you tighten the quick release nut, loosen the tension on the pilot drill by turning the feed screw in the opposite direction. Mark the feed screw with the depth of travel for the pipe diameter being worked on, in this case 17mm. Refer to procedures for the relevant depth of travel. Fit the half inch adapter to the air ratchet. If no air is available, a hand ratchet can be used. Check that the ratchet is rotating in a clockwise direction. There's a switch for changing the direction. Close the test valve and begin drilling. Tightening the feed screw as you progress and monitoring pressure. This operation needs only fingertip control. Too much pressure will damage the whole saw. As the pilot drill cuts through the surface, the gauge will rise to full district pressure. If this does not happen, or if the surface is medium pressure, seek advice. When the hole saw cuts through the surface, you will hear a change in the note of the air ratchet and the drill shaft will drop. Verify that the drill is through by checking the position of the tape mark. It should now be possible to turn the feed screw freely by hand. Unscrew the quick release, retract the drill shaft and close the valve by a quarter turn. At this point, attach a purge hose to the test valve on the drill. Gently and slowly push the stopper into the service using only fingertip pressure. This operation does not require any force or else damage will occur to the spring and stopper. When the stopper is in position, open the test valve. The pressure will drop to zero. Close the test valve and test for build-up of pressure. If a seal is not achieved, reposition the stopper and monitor the gauge. Disconnect the stopper from the spring by turning the handle anti-clockwise. You will hear the spring click as it disconnects from the rod. Retract the insertion rod and remove the purge hose. Unscrew the drill body and remove it. It is essential that the coupon is retrieved. If it has been retained in the hole saw, remove it now. If the coupon is not retrieved at this stage, you will need to retrieve it later. Remove the stopper assembly, then remove the clamp. The stopper is now in position and the service can be cut. If the coupon was not retained in the hole saw and is visible in the service, use the magnet to retrieve it. Fit a continuity bond. The pipe may be cut through the drilling. However, you may wish to check where the stopper is in the service using the spring and cut accordingly, making sure the hacksaw does not interfere with the stopper. The nearer the stopper is to the cut, the easier it will be to retrieve it later. If necessary, get rid of any swarf with the magnet. 
Attach the retrieval rod, not the spring rod, to the stopper and fit the live insertion gland assembly and make a gas tight seal. Attach the gland and fit the retrieval handle, then withdraw the stopper. Close the valve. The service is now isolated and you can remove the continuity bond. If the coupon has not been retrieved earlier, or by removal of the stopper, this must be removed now using the magnet before live insertion takes place. You are now ready to carry out live service insertion.